Edward was the most exciting dancer of his day. Edward's contribution to the world of dance is enormous. The audience loved him. He was one of the most famous dancers of all times. I would go and watch Eddie when he was dancing just to see what he did, how easy he made it look, even though we knew it wasn't easy. He brought a lot of the audience in to the New York City Ballet. They would come because they wanted to see Balanchine's ballets, but they wanted to see Edward Villela dancing them. I grew up in Queens. In Queens, there were not too many guys doing ballet. Certainly not on my block. However, I had a sister and my mother took her to a local ballet school. So I got dragged to my sister's school. They were doing a lot of very poetic gestures. However, they started to jump. And that was something I could relate to, so I went in the back of the room, and then I started to fly around, and I disrupted the class. And the teacher went to my mother and said, get him out of here, we'll put him in tights at the bar. The next day, I was in tights at the bar. As time went by, and my mother took me off to the School of American Ballet, it was George Balanchine's, the New York City Ballet's school. From that time on, I wanted to do nothing other than become a ballet dancer. My father was not pleased. He was very embarrassed that his son was wearing tights. I was in the school from 10 to 16 before my father said, forget it, get out of here. You are going to college. I'm a graduate of the New York State Maritime College where I won my letters in baseball and I was also a welterweight boxing champion. When I graduated, I gave my degree to my father. I said, that's for you. For me, I'm gonna be a ballet dancer. Didn't talk to me for a year until a second invite. On stage, please. On stage for rubies. Musicians in the pit, please. After I joined the New York City Ballet, he said, okay, we'll come but we may not be able to recognize you from where you'll be in the back and where we will be out here. I had three out of four principal and soloist roles on that first night. Evening ends, I go off stage left and I see my mother and father in the wings in tears. We laughed and hugged and cried on that stage and my father became a ballot to me and handed out my reviews and pictures in the Garment Center. George Balanchine was one of the most prolific choreographer probably in the history of dance. Ballets poured out of him. He started using me selectively and found as he tested me that I could go the next step. And that's what it was, a step-by-step -step process until I had one of the most incredible repertoires ever given to a male principal dancer. Can we just do that thing at the end? Sure. There are not so many ballet partnerships, and I think Mr. B saw something in us that he would very often pair us. When he cast you in something, he cast you, and he used your best abilities. So anytime he made a work for you, he was making you a star. In those days, we danced eight times a week. I could be a different human being, representing a different period, a different style, a different manner, any given night. He did Oberon in A Midsummer Night's Dream for me. He did a work called Bugaku, a Japanese rendition of a, a wedding ceremony, and made me a samurai. Tarantella, I was uh, Tarantella of the Lela. Another work called Jewels. The Ruby section was a Stravinsky piece. The Rubies was like nothing I'd ever done with, with Eddie, and I thought, oh my goodness, this is so hard. How will I ever, ever do this? He made this as American and jazz-like, but also underneath it, his point of departure was horses. So you had to figure out all of these kinds of things. We 
just didn't have to really speak because we knew each other so well. I could thrill myself and I know he'd be there. Probably two of my favorites were not made for me. They were made in the Diaghilev area. Apollo was one of them. And the other was a work called Prodigal Son. That became a signature role for me. So it was a remarkable experience. It will never happen again. One day, I get a call asking if I would be appointed to the President's National Council on the Arts. Lyndon Johnson, that's how long ago. But it was an extraordinary and amazing time for me because the NEA was maybe two or three years old. There was now a focus, there was a catalyst. It was a national statement that we have wonderful artists. It raised visibility so high across the nation and across all of the art forms. So the importance of, of the NEA was uh, immeasurable. I feel at the time in the 50s and 60s, it wasn't as accepted to be a male dancer. I'm going to talk a little bit about ballet. I'm a ballet dancer. I think he changed the face of what people understood a male dancer to be. For me, it means to have total control of your entire body. He showed the athleticism. You had to have power and strength to be a dancer. You had to lift your partner. He had this huge jump and it came from nowhere. And the musicality and the delivery of it was so exciting. Eddie had a huge influence on how people saw ballet in this country. What Eddie had was that American spirit in his dancing. You just watched that power and the speed he could move in. He was a crusader in the art of dance to popularize it. Miami City Ballet. It would never have happened without Edward Villela. It wouldn't be the company it is without his vision. He brought them to international acclaim. We sought assembly, assembly. The National Endowment for the Arts was very, very important to us. My background and experience there uh, gave me an advantage. Chate, chate. One and two. Now move a little forward on this, guys. If you were seeking national funding, you had to have a national reputation. I came from Balanchine, and I was bringing a Balanchinian repertoire to the rest of the country. So that garnered attention. By four or five years in, we were ready. Then we applied, and we had support from there on because we kept earning it. Such a special place in my heart for Eddie. It'll always be there. His giving back to the art, training decades of dancers. He's never lost his love of the arts and dance. There are many dancers who are really good dancers, but then there are a few that come through and we just know that they are something special. He is an icon in that way. The National Endowment for the Arts means to me that I have had a most extraordinary life. My life would have been maybe half of what it was. The whole idea is not to plateau. There's an infinity out there. You have to go and go and go and go until you don't know how to go anymore.